So when you are given a exercise, right? Try to submit it on time, right? That's the very first thing you need to remember. So I have got some of you actually sent me, right? Some of you have not. So remember, it's up to you, right? Not for me. It's good that if you get an A, I also get some credit, right? And if you didn't, sometimes I get a blame as well, but I, ultimately result is yours, right? Remember that. So having said that, let me start. So functions, there are many functions and the exam, usually you will have to use functions such as sum, average, min, max, and count. Although I have taught you round and rank normally, uh, I have not seen very recently they have given. So uh, what you need to remember is first five uh, uh, functions here. So the summation or sum will give you the, uh, the sum of all the cells in concert. Average will calculate the average and mean and max will give you minimum and maximum values. Okay, count will count number of cells, okay, which contains a numerical value, remember. So if it is blank or if it, if it contains some uh, other text, then it won't, uh, you know, count it. So remember that. Okay. So the homework exercises I have given, I simply give you some details. And then uh, you are supposed to write functions. Now, for example, adding contents in a cell A1, B1, C1, D1. Okay, can one of you tell me the answer? So what should be the answer? Yes. What is the function? Sum. Yes, it should be the sum, right? So when you write the answer, remember you have to use the equal sign. That is compulsory. And then you can write the sum function with the brackets and then the range. There are a couple of answers I can give you. So you can say A1 comma, B1 comma, C1 comma, D1. So that's uh, one answer. Okay. Another answer would be you can simply say the shortest one. We can say A1 to D1. So this is the shortest possible answer. That is the shortest possible answer we can have. Okay. The other one, sometimes in the exams, they might ask you to write it without any functions. If that is the case, you can simply say, okay, that is A1 plus B1 plus, C1 plus, B1, right? So the, I have given you three answers. If your answer is one of these, you got the correct answer. All of these are okay, but this is the best, I guess, because it's the shortest answer possible. Okay, right. The next one, average. Can you use the chat to send me the answer? So how do you find the average? Uh, 
average. Yes, I got the answer from Jonna Yenula. We can say Malindu. How about the others? Okay, first thing is you do have to identify which one is the, the correct function. So in this case, we have to say average. Okay, and then you have to list down the cell, we call cell range. Right. So we will have average, we will have a one to a 10. A1 to A10. Okay, so that's the answer. The shortest one possible. Or else you can say, okay, A1, comma, A2, comma, that is also possible. Now, if we ask you to write the answer without using any functions, how do you write? Yes, Imash. If I ask you to write the equation to find the average, but without using any functions, how do you write? Yes. Now, how do you find the average? You have to and first, uh, first of all, you have to add everything together. And then you have to divide by the number of elements. So in this case, we have 10. Right? First of all, you have to add everything. Right? So we can say A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5 plus Right, a six plus a seven plus a eight plus a nine plus a ten, and you divide it by ten, isn't it? Right, that's without using any functions. So I got the answers for Mimashi. Okay, another one. Now let's say I want to get the average using some function. What is the equation? Yes. How do you write a function to get the average with some function? Yes, Malidu gave the correct answer, but there's a small mistake, Malidu. Let's check. Imashi, there's a small mistake in your one as well. Yenula, yours also, there's a small mistake. Just check. Okay, so now the same thing. Now, if you want to do this part, first, what is the equation? 
you have to use some function, right? And then you divide by 10. So the correct answer should be equal. First of all, you have to get the total. We have to see sum a1 to 18. Then you divide by 10. Okay. So those who have sent me the answer, they were all correct, but they have put the 10 inside. You don't have to put 10 inside. Should be outside, isn't it? Because you find the total and then you divide by 10. Okay. Third one. Okay. Now send me the answers. Okay, Sichide, can you tell me uh, answer for third one? How do you how do you find the minimum of cells, uh, minimum values of cell range A5 to E5? Yes, Titi? Okay, I'm getting answers from Dulaj and Taroshi. Imashi, Malidu. Find the minimum value of cell range A5 to E5, Sitija. I'm waiting to answer my question. Sitija, are you there? Okay, Pravi, what is the answer? Prabashi? Okay, Right, okay. So finding a minimum value, so it's mean, right? So we have to use mean function here. So mean and max. For minimum, we have to use mean. Uh, sorry, not mean, mean function. And then you have to have the cell range. We can say, okay, this goes from A5 to E5. A5 to E5. Then to find the max one, Instead of mean, we can say max. We can say, okay, max of E5 to E5. Right? So this will give you the minimum and maximum values. And then, how do you count the number of cells? Counting number of cells. Simply we can say count, right? So we can say, okay, 
we will have count. So we can say, okay, count. We will say, okay, E3 to E8. Count E3 to E8. Right, the last one. This actually will not come to your exams, but let me tell you because we discuss uh, in a result sheet, how do you say this, right? Now, the function for this is called if, right? And then there are three parts. The first of all, the condition. And then the answer, if condition is true, condition is true. Then answer, if condition is false. So this is the structure, okay? So you have to be very careful when using the chat system, right, to chat. So sometimes uh, I might get the, what you're chatting, right? Okay. So the structure is if, then we have a condition, then we need to put R if the condition is true then we have to put the as if the condition is false. So this is the structure to use print. So what is the condition here? Now let me see, what is the condition here? Right. So I can say if, yes, we have to say print pass if the marks of the cell A4 is greater than or equal to 40. Right. So the condition is A4 should be greater than or equal to 40. Okay, this is how we will write the condition. Right? So in if there are three parts, condition, as if the condition is true, as if condition is false. Right now, the second one is if condition is true. So that is pass, isn't it? If it is true, we want to print pass. So you can simply say pass. Then if the condition false, the answer. So we can say false. Simply we can put it like this. So remember this. So use of if. But I told you in the exam, usually you have to remember 
about the use of functions such as sum, average, mean, max, and count. That's all you need to, you know, remember. But all the others for uh, your extra information, use of rounding or frag, and then uh, the selection. So simply without using function, we can uh, get the total by adding the cells. So here we have B2 plus C2 plus D2, isn't it? So that will give you 203. So when you autofill, you will get the answer, right? And the similar answer, you can get it just by using sum. We can say sum. Uh, B2 to D2. So that's the best answer we can, best and the shortest answer. And the average is simply you can say average. Again, the cell range. B2 to D2. So that will give you the average. Right? And then pass fail. Now average, if you want to uh, round it off, I didn't talk to you about the round function. You can use round and then you can give the value and then you can tell how many decimal places you want. Let me say two decimal places, I will put two. So if you put that, you will get rounded off like this. But this is not in your syllabus, but this is just for your information. Otherwise, the other technique is you can simply use this here you can uh, uh, decrease the number of decimal paper uh, uh, decimal places in the display. So by reducing, you can make it uh, the same as. Right, and then we can use pass fail. So let's say based on the average, if the average marks is greater than or equal to 40, let me say a pass. So if I can ask, okay, F, to greater than or equal to 40, right? Then I can say, okay, pass. Or else we can say fail. Simply it says pass, right? Now if I copy, so we will get the same answers. And then let me put the rank as well. The rank is tricky one. Put a lot A pass fail. We know to pull one A B C D than the range as well. Good point. A come out of color then pull one. I mean, I mean, what the I C T will take the B the C the D the K. Right. Hmm? Then up the rank in Gatuk, me rank function at Putala at the Yenica, me, me, Namut Mamakela to not rank a key the win known a putty up in a me range a then unke again they know. So we have to give the number and then we want to get the rank of this number within this range. What is the range? We will have F2, it goes from F2 to yes, F6. Then it will say, okay, this is the second position. But when you copy this, okay, there's a problem. For, for uh, when you uh, autofill it, you will not get the correct answer. There's a reason why. Because when you autofill, what will happen? It will uh, comparatively change the function. Now it goes from B2 to D2. In the next cell, it goes from B3 to D3. Now, similarly, the rank also we have goes from F2 to F6. Second line goes from F3 to F7. That is true, right? So which means we have to fix the range. When you want to fix something, you have to use dollar. Now here I am going to fix two and fix six. So how do I fix? I put a dollar in front of the num number because I have to fix num only. So if that is the case, right? now when you get the copy it now we are getting the the correct the ranking 
Now, similarly, we can count number of students or count how many, right? Uh, now, for example, I can say, okay, uh, number of students who participate for exams, right? We say a number of students, right? So in that particular case, we know we can say count. Right? And then we can say the cell range. Simply if you put it this, or if you just type, you'll say it's a five. There are five students participate for this. Let's say Amaya didn't participate. We can remove this. Right? You see the math. Now there are only four students participated. And Amara is absent. I'm going to put AB. Right? Amara is absent. Subject is absent. Right? Then there are four students. You see, likewise, remember that the count will count number of, uh, you know, the number only the numerical ones. Right? missing cells right? minimum and maximum. Minimum, maximum. Minimum, I can say, okay, what is the minimum marks for ICT? So I can say min, the range is B2 to B6. It says 45. Similarly, right? For maths also 45, science it's 34. Likewise, I can say max. In max, we can say, okay, it go, should go from B2, B2 to B2, we can say this will go to B6. Right now we say it's 89. The maximum is 89. Right. Okay, so you can adjust the column bits. Now, for example, here, I'm going to adjust the width. Uh, for example, if you go to column width, you can change. Let me put uh, four and C. Okay, that's okay. So similarly, I'm going to make everything is four. Yes, looks good. Right, we'll remove this. And the total and average, pass well and rank. That will column with, I will put like uh, five. Well, let me try four. Okay, so average is not enough. So for average, I will give you a little bit more width. Let me say six. It's even five might work, column width. Okay, five. Okay, right. I'm going to put this as ABG. Right here I will say pass fail like this. Okay. So now um, let me color the table. Now these are the labels. I'm going to center them, bold color. And then I can decide on some color as well. Right. Some colors. Okay. And then these are the other set of uh, labels, students. So I will put in different color. Right. Then this is again previous labels. Right. And these are the ones I have actually typed. 
and then these are the values i have entered manually so you see that they are absentee here and then let me put uh, and let me center it and this is also absentee i put the uh, you know red color just to highlight this one right so these are the ones actually i have used functions to fill let me indicate in different colors maybe light blue and here also also we'll put light okay so i hope now you should be able to do uh, you know simple calculations like this and i don't think it's that difficult try this i will send you this as a homework right so i think the killer then pass well right now i am going to uh, perform the calculations from the beginning so i am going to remove this remove this right now tell me how to find the total marks what is the equation equal sum yes we can say sum it goes from b2 to yeah. P two to D two. D two. We can simply say sum B two to D two. Similarly, average. Average. Again, B two to D two. D two. Then, how do you find the? minimum do not b2 b2 to b6 yes we have to say b2 to b6 similarly we can have max max we can say b2 to b2 to d2 B six. B six. Right. The number of uh, student is count. So we can say count. B two to B six. But when you say count B two to B six, remember that if you have like text, it will it is going to ignore them. It will count number of cells with numerical values. Right. Okay, so likewise, pass fail. Ma, I told you like pass fail. There are three parts. First, the condition. Second, the output if it is true. Third, the output if it is false. So we can say if let's say I'm going to decide whether pass or fail. based on the average marks so let me change um for example f2 i'm going to check whether it's greater than or equal to 40 so that's a condition now if it is greater than 40 i want to say okay the student is pass so we will have pass if not we want to say fail right so pass fail so you will get pass here the rank is the rank rank has two parts first of all you have to tell which number you want to rank i'm going to look at the average one so average one will be 67 sorry uh, f2 that's average i want to rank it based on f22 right f6 
that's how we will get it now let's fill auto fill it so i am going to auto fill this one then average then pass then rank similarly this one now here these all these equations when auto fill we get the correct answers except the rank the reason why we are getting error here is when you auto fill it will generate right comparatively what do you mean by comparatively here now when you say okay sum b2 to d2 then you will see that when you copy when you auto fill it will go as b3 to d3 yes and then here b4 to d4 so likewise if you put rank we want to rank f2 between f2 to f6 so when you auto fill it we get f3 to the range has changed now it goes from f3 to f7 f7 means here you see the problem right so now we need to fix this what do you have to fix we have to fix number 2 and then number 6 because it should be always f2 to f6 right so i'm going to put dollar f2 to f6 then now the rank is 2 so you when you fill it now we are getting the the correct answer now whenever you make a change let's say someone's ict marks it's actually 26 you see what will happen so everything will be changed accordingly right so let's say amaya Uh, did the maths again let me give like 56 you know so likewise you can actually make the changes to the sheet okay so with that one i think uh, we will conclude this part hope now you got a good understanding of use of functions hi right. the next thing that i am going to discuss the functional is we have discussed isn't it now we have done the functional is right okay now let's write down the note on auto filling uh we have already seen how to do the auto filling so let's uh, write down about this one so let's go to the note again uh, i will select the yes white board right okay now let me go back so let's write down the auto fill auto fill so what do you mean by auto fill right whenever you type something you don't have to repeat it right so what do you mean by auto fill it will fill the cell data right within the range of cells so when you have multiple cells we can complete only one so that's what we do with auto fill let's take now
right now let's write uh, something so let's see how to copy something given it here right now let's say we want to copy right cell range from a1 to a10 So this is how you are going to do this. How you are going to do this? We'll first type, right? One in A1 cell. Then we are going to sell, select A1 and using auto fill handle, we are going to drag up to cell A20. Now, which one is auto fill handle? Remember, we, we have seen when you go to the end of the cell, you see the arrow will convert into black cross. Right? You will get a something like this black cross. Maybe you can take it out. So this is called fill handle. Right, so this is called fill handle. So this is called fill handle. So you go to the at the end once your arrow or mouse pointer become a black cross like this, you click and drag. So in this one, we are copying the same value. So you copy, you have to type only once. You type one and then you auto fill it. So let me share in this in the Excel. So I'm going to add another sheet, right? So let's say I want to type from one. 10 times. So you go from to this place, you will see the cursor now in white cross. If you go to the end of this point, it will turn into black cross, the auto fill handle. So you drag up to 10. So it will automatically fill the same value. Right. Similarly, if you want to print 1 to 10, so you have to first type 1 and 2. We'll write down that I will explain. Now, if you want to print numbers from 1 to 10, this is how you are going to do it. How? You type 1 and 2. You type 1 in A1, 2 in cell A2. Then, right, you are going to select both A1, A2, and we use autofill handle. Print in numbers 1 to 10. Okay. So, let me quickly show you this one as well. If you go to this place, right, now instead of 1, we want to print 1 to 10. So you have to type first 1 in A1, 2 in A2. You select both using the auto fill. You can drag. So it will give you numbers from 1 to 10. Right. So that's what we have written here to print numbers. 1 to 10 in cell range A1 to A10, type 1 in cell 1 and type 2 in cell 2. Then we can select A1 and A2 and using autofill, we can drag 
to cell 18. So instead of drag, you can just copy paste as well. So instead of autofill, you can simply use copy and paste. So make a note of that one as well. You can simply copy paste. Okay, thanks, Zulina. Right. Now, I want to discuss another topic. Right. So, what I want to discuss here is the type of references. So, we can say relative, absolute, mixed references, right? Relative, absolute and mixed references. Okay, remember now, now when you autofill, now let's say I'm going to take this equation. I'm going to type something type like A1 plus B1, right? Now let's assume that this is in, this is row number, right? Let's say this is one, and this is a column is in, let's say you are in C, you are in column C, right? So let, this is an assumption. So let's assume that we are in column C and row number one, right? If you copy this to row number two, if you copy this to row number two, that means I'm going to get this to right down, right? So I'm going to get it to one line down. So what will be the answer? If I copy this to one row down, what will be my answer? Yes. If you autofill it, A1 to B1 to the next line, what do you will get? Yes, Tarushi gave me the correct answer. Api ka pehle ya palle hat auto fill karo. Api liye ni equation ni ke a1 b1 na mukadda mat labi na uttari. Right, ma ma Excel sheet ke tar me anna. So I'm going to Excel sheet. Right. This is auto fill in me. Right. Now let me have some numbers, 10, 15, 34, 56, 12, 9, and so on. So let me put it to A beam so that uh, you are clear everything. So we have, so see, I'm going to say A1 plus B1. 
if you auto fill it or copy paste both are working so auto fill it means you click and drag right or else you can say we can say control c and then we can select the other range we can press control v we'll get the same output now if the equation we have given is a1 b1 if you go one line down what is the uh, what is the equation we are getting yes So what will happen right now right now we are in a1 b1 right so that's here if you get go one line down what will happen this becomes one line down a2 b2 one line down a3 p3 So if you go to one line down, that will change the row number, isn't it? It will change the row number. It will change the row number. Makadamali the matter pahadri nevak ahana prashni. C1, C2, C3, and then we will select the pin. Oh, the main is the main is the main is the main is the so I have typed this one. What have I typed? Minimum. Right. So now here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, copy this, autofill this to the next line. So what do you expect? So if I do this, what will happen? Now, if you go here, now the equation has become, it goes from B1 to B3. So that means if you go from cell row wise, sorry, column wise, what happened? It will change the column. Isn't it? The original equation is A1 to A3. When I auto fill it, it will become B1 to B3. If I auto fill one more time, can you tell me what will be the output? C1 and C3. It becomes C1 to C3. Yes, good. Right. So let's go back to the not again. So what I said earlier, right? 
if you go one line uh, row one row down so this becomes what right it will change the row number so this becomes a2 to b2 a2 plus b2 so this is called relative right so this is called relative similarly if you copy to next slide next column so that means d right so it will be d here right so the answer you are getting is right what is the answer if you copy to the next column what will be the answer yes b1 this should has this should be into b1 plus a change to b then b change to c1 yes c1 so it should be b1 to c1 when you copy in this direction so this is also called relative this is also relative So let's write down this under this. So relative means calling cells by just column and row labels called relative referencing. When a formula contains relative referencing, it is copied from one cell to another. Excel does not create an exact copy of the formula. It will change cell addresses relative to the row and column. For example, simple addition of formula C1, if it is equal to A1 plus B1 is copied to C2, the formula would change to A2, B2 to reflect the new row. the absolute referencing absolute means right you are not going to change it now for example i can write something like this i can say okay dollar a dollar one so when you put dollar it won't change So if, if you this is to say that okay, no change for A and no change for no change for column, no change for row. Right? So for example, if I put something like this. A1 plus B1. Let me put it in this, this situation. So if you copy in this direction, right? 
right? Can you guess what might be the output? If you copy it to the column side, input time, yes? Can you write the answer in the chat? When you put a dollar, no change. So dollar A means no change to the column, no change to the row. So there's no change. So it will be dollar A and dollar one, no change. What will happen to B? B will become, how she said, B becomes C. And there's no change to one. Similarly, if you copy to a row down, so what will be the output? Yes. What will be the output? When you have dollar meaning no change, no change. So dollar A will not change. No change for column. No change for row. So no change for this one. Plus, what will happen to B1? Yes, it should be B1. Remember, when you copy, you will have the dollar. So when you have two dollar marks here, when you put a dollar mark to A, it will say, okay, don't change the color. When you put a dollar mark to one, we are going to say, okay, don't change the row. Now let me throw this in the Excel sheet. Now what I'm going to type is size different. Right? Now I'm going to type equal sign dollar a dollar one plus b one. See what will happen. Can you drag it? So these are the output we are getting. So here dollar a dollar one plus b one. So some mega then. So this is dollar a dollar one plus b one. Now when you see autofill to the next one, the second one, here is what has happened. So it is dollar a dollar one plus b2. Right? So one becomes two. If you copy down again, dollar one a dollar one plus b3. So see, there's no change. Okay, now I'm going to change a bit. I will go this place. I'm going to change, I'm going to remove dollar mark. Right? right. I'm going to remove dollar mark. Right? Now my equation is dollar A1 plus B1. If I copy this down, what will be the output? Now this one is dollar a1 plus b1 so what is the equation for the second line then
Yes. What is the equation for the second line? If you copy B1, C1 one down, right now we have dollar A1 plus B1. So what has happened? If I click it now, you will see there's no change for A, but one becomes two because there's no dollar mark for two, right? Okay. Now let me go back again and try. Now instead of this, okay, if I have something like this. I will remove the learner. Can you tell me what will be the answer if I copy paste? To both sides. One row and one column. May copy, copy, corrupt. Another one, I'm going to remove dollar from A, I will put a dollar for one. So what will be the answer? Now, what you need to remember when you change to this type, it will change the column only, right? The answer for this C is, it will change only the column. So equal sign, you can't change the column here because you have a dollar mark. So there's no change. There's no change to the row plus. Now B, column we need to change. So B becomes C and the value is one. Similarly, if you take this side, now if you go down, it will change the row. So we can say, okay, we don't have to worry about the column, now row. So one becomes two, because there's no dollar sign for two. And B, there's no change for E, but one becomes two. So it will be dollar A2 plus E2. Now let's see when you have the dollar mark in the number. So if you go this side, right, this side, we have equal sign, A becomes B. 
because there's no dollar sign, so A should be K. Then B becomes C. Right? Similarly, if you come here, right? Now this time it could change the row, right? So we have A, but dollar one. Because row we can't change when you have dollar one. So this becomes right, a dollar one. Now this is called relate. Uh, sorry, absolute. This is called absolute reference. So what you see here is the example for absolute reference. So let's take down. So if you want to prevent the change, right? So cells must be called by absolute reference. And this is accomplished by placing a dollar sign within the cell address in the formula. So mixed referencing can also be used where only the row or column is fixed. Right? So this is called absolute referencing. So the, when you have both dollar marks, this is called absolute referencing. So this is called absolute. We fix both row and column. But these two we call mixed references. Right? This is called mixed references. Because one, you don't have dollar for both, only one of them. It's called mixed reference. Okay, let's take it down. Here is the homework for this week. So there are three equations. I want you to write down what will be the output if you copy this to one row down and one column to the right, right? Right. So when you just type, it's very simply like A1, B1. When you copy to the row, row down, it will change only the row number. When you copy to the right, the, to the column, then it will change the column later. So this is called relative references. But if you want to make it absolute, meaning no change to both column and row, we can put two dollars, one for the column, one for the row. Then it won't change both ways. No change both ways. This is called absolute referencing. 
but you can mix it. Now here we put a dollar to column. Here we put dollar to row. So this is called mix referency. So when you copy down, right? This will not change anyway. Only row will be changed. And when you copy to the column, here column will not change because you put a dollar there, but here it will change. Similarly, if you put a dollar mark here, then when you copy down, there's no change for the row, but there will be, it will be changed to the column. So this is called mixed referencing. So what you have to do for the homework is, so I want you to write down equations, what will happen if you copy this to down and if you copy to the right. Two answers each. For each, you need to have two answers. What will be if you write down the equation? Okay, so this is the homework and I want you to uh, send me that. Okay then, that's all for today then.